a story of greed, serial matrimony, international intrigue, unregulated human experiments, sleazy infomercial producers, a skeet-shooting, neutral-loaf-loving rebel chemist, and a murderous, perpetually intoxicated Irish-German mixologist slash retired Orn Pay star. If that didn't get your attention, nothing will. Buy The Cure now. A link is in the description. What's going on, you simplistic simpinators? Terrence Pop here, Redonculus.com. Bad Pop showed up today because we are going to be covering every woman's favorite story. Just like Beauty and the Beast, it's a tale as old as time. Not to mention wrinkly, and dried out, and usually smelly. You know you're getting old dudes when you gotta bring a feather duster to four play, five play, or even six play. Oh God! Get off me, Grandma. I'm done. Well, that was good times. That's right, ladies. We're talking about the last stop in that express train all the way to Box Wine and Catland. Stop! Personally, I don't know why you're always surprised. You can see that shit coming a mile away. Oh, oh, there it is. Oh, there we go. Oh, over the edge she goes in slow motion. It's like clockwork. We're talking about the unavoidable nature of time and you choose to ignore it. That's on you. I personally, I'm on the 65 and out plan. That's why I have a full menagerie here. <laughs> And so should you. So, if you haven't poured yourself one by now, you are way behind. Yeah. In order to understand the wall, we have to go back to <laughs> the beginning. Now, I'm not talking about God demonstrating his intestinal fortitude. You know that time about four, four and a half billion years ago when he decided to eat some Del Taco and basically shat out the entire universe? We're not going back that far because I don't have the patience, the booze, or the time. But... I do have life experience, so uh, buckle up. We're talking about the ladies in high school, right after they developed those beautiful secondary characteristics, if you know what I mean. Ha ha, women mature faster than men, hee <laughs> hee, ho ho. Emphasis on ho ho, screen five. Ha <laughs> ha. Now, I'm just gonna put this out there right now. You are correct, women do mature faster than men. All the dudes know this is coming, so let's drink and say it together. But the instant these ladies get that next level attention from men, the maturity stops. And why? Because mentally they realize uh, they have arrived. Men want to do ya, so that means you're all good, right? I don't need that time to develop what they call that. Oh yeah, it's right, intelligence, wisdom, and personality and character. Who needs that while you got boobs, booty, nah, and nah. I'm sorry dudes, I have now been on YouTube so long, I forgot how to say words that will get me banned. Unless you're talking about the C word, and I love that one, it's an acronym that stands for Can't Understand Normal Thinker, and we shorten it to can't. <sighs> Sounds refreshing, but in the long run it really isn't. Let's be honest here dudes, it is far more expensive <laughs> then it is refreshing. Only in America can an $8 sundress cost $2,000 a month in child support. Been there, done that. Who knows, <laughs> I might be your daddy. So I had a <laughs> thought. I am gonna break down the entire concept of <laughs> the wall. And it comes down to one thing and one thing only, Time. If you're the type of person who wants their back blown out by the guy who's six feet tall with the six pack abs with the six figure income, I got news for you. With the exception of money, all the rest of that shit blows away with time. They say time is the fire in which we burn. Not to be confused with the sensation you get when you urinate. 
<laughs> Screen five. <laughs> Ladies, I shouldn't have to tell you this, but looks, they fade and they fade quick. The average woman loses one look point every seven years after the age of 25. And I made a whole episode about it. Links in the description. So if you're a seven at 25, you're a five at 40. <laughs> and all of those bargaining chips that you thought you would have for the rest of your life when you graduated high school, they gone. When you're 18 and you have the long legs and big tits, the world is your oyster. But if you don't strike while the iron is hot, the only oyster, well, that's between your legs. That's also why we call it the chlamydia clam. Uh, what's the space ghost? <laughs> this is inevitable. It is going to happen to us all, men and women alike. Later for most men, hey, hey, don't you get mad at me, it's the truth. For most women, you start hitting that wall between 30 and 35. If you're a dude and you take care of yourself, uh, you got to about 50. Sorry, ladies, that is the difference between earned value and innate value. When your value is based off of youth, beauty, and fertility, that's a very finite window. Women are born with that value. That's why they need to capitalize on it while they're young. By the time you're 35, it's pretty much done. <laughs> but when your value is based off of accomplishments, you can do that pretty much till the day you drop dead. Dudes, they have to earn their value and they don't even hit their stride until they're like 35. That's why dudes who are 50 to 60 years old can date chicks who are just barely legal to drink. Because they can. <laughs> Winning. Yeah. But have you ever seen a 65 year old woman marrying a 25 year old dude? <laughs> Probably not. Now, I'm not saying it doesn't happen ever, but you know, some dudes are just disgusting. Oh my God! Oh. Ah. Ah. Well, perhaps you're one of those guys who likes, you know, the smell of preparation H when it's been applied in denture cream. Who am I to judge? Now that I've said that and I got my woke points for the day, <laughs> I'm gonna go throw up. And even then, you 65 year old spinsters out there, you're just the bullseye in the bar. Sorry. You're the rental car dudes get for drag racing. <laughs> no liability, no risk. And when they're done, <laughs> they leave you smoking and dripping in the parking lot at the rental lot. But there's a lot of women out there who hit this wall a lot faster than others. And we're going to be talking about that tonight. 35 is just the average. There are some poor women out there who hit the wall in high school. They have so much gelatinous fat packed onto those bones, you can't even tell if it's a dude or a chick anymore. Hello, Pat. So I gave this whole thing some thought, and I came up with a list of accelerators. These are traits and behaviors that make you hit the wall faster or harder. The number one deciding factor for everyone, genetics. If you want to get a close idea of what your woman's going to look like in 20 years, go look at the mother. If she introduces you to her mother and she's 500 pounds and bedridden in the hospital and she has her own film crew for her 600 pound life, it is time to go. You need to pull the same maneuver my father did. He went out to get some smokes and didn't come back for 53 years. And now he did. Now there are three things that'll speed up that trajectory into the wall faster than anything else. Smoking, drugs, and booze. Don't judge me. Don't get me wrong, dudes. Dating smokers could be fun, but... Only for a very, very short window of opportunity. You know, 18, like 22. Take advantage of that oral fixation for all it's worth. But be very careful. Wash that shit off so you don't pass anything nasty onto the side chick. Oh my God, why do you taste like nicotine? <sighs> I plead the fifth. Keep going. And when you're done, I want some mayo on my BLT. The next one on the list is drugs, and it should go without saying. You can go from zero to hag in less than a year on some hard drugs. 
The next one is booze, and I am not the shining example on this one, so we're gonna move along. But let's just boil it down to this. If you spent your 20s partying from Tuesday all the way to Sunday, you're probably not getting a ring put on it, I'm just saying. If you have a star on the Hollywood Walk of Shame, <laughs> forget about it. In fact, excessive partying is the next one on the list. And excessive partying usually leads to one hell of a sausage safari that lasts about 12 to 18 years. I know quite a few women who can list the number of partners by descriptions. Because they were so hammered each and every time, it was a blurry parade of peen ice and she got no one's names. And let's be honest, even if she did get a name or two, it's probably not their real name anyway. Hey baby, it's getting kind of late and I got fresh beer at my place. You wanna just check that out? Yeah, my name, it's Engelbert Humperdinck. Nice to meet you. Kringlebert Fisty Buns, how's it going? Zinglebert Bimbledeck, how you doing? I'm from Turkey. Scott McTabish, yeah, I'm from Ireland. Bendy Dick Come and Snatch. Slut Bunwana, <laughs> I'm from Iraq. I'm Chief King Dong from Slapaho Nation, nice to meet you. What, of course I have a casino. <laughs> you wanna bet against the house? <laughs> and don't you dare believe these ladies when they tell you how many partners they've had. Some of these ladies, they keep three different lists, one for each orifice. If the meat is not delivered to the warehouse through the front entrance, it don't count. If you come across as marriage material and you ask her for her body count, that number's gonna be anywhere between one and four. But all of those sticky deliveries right to the mail slot, you're not gonna get that number. And when you're really gonna find out, it'll be too little too late and you're gonna think she's on the pill. I'm not gonna say we've all been there, but most of us probably have. You know, the lights are off, she's bent over, you're going to town, and then a car drives by. She insisted on having the lights off, so when that light goes by, you get a quick snapshot of some serious nightmare fuel. Why'd you stop? Cause your butthole has a clit. Got her in, oh. <laughs> Dudes, if she wants the lights off all the time, <laughs> red alert, you better dive. She wants you to think she's modest, but never mind the fact that her slot C looks like a dragon fruit that hate fucked another dragon fruit, god. Damn, <laughs> run out the aircraft and hit your reserve, baby. It's over, the, the aircraft is on fire. The next two accelerators right into the wall, bad diet and weight gain. Everyone's heard of the freshman 15. What about the sophomore 70? Ah, <laughs> I know, I know guys, you know, you're gonna go pop. What about the college athletes? They gotta stay skinny and thin. Normally, I would agree with you, but they still gain that weight in other ways. And it drips out of three different orifices. And I'm gonna give you a little bit of understanding because I had a thought. Most college students, they eat like garbage scows because that's pretty much all they can afford. So ladies, I understand, but when you're gaining 15 pounds a year and your attitude is, well, those dudes just have to deal with it. Not gonna work out for you. When you're 18 to 22, you're basically invincible. When you treat your body like shit, it's pretty much what you should expect in return. And this is one area where genetics really comes into play. There's people out there who literally eat nothing but bacon and meat and drink their dinner and they still live to be 95. I'm not one of those people. In fact, most of us, we're not one of those people. But women behave like they are, and then they expect you to just deal with it. They even created a whole movement called body positivity to make you think you're the problem. Let, let, let's pretend that's not true. Yeah. yeah. And one of the fastest ways women gain weight is they drop a couple of kids. How many women out there use getting pregnant and having children as an excuse to pull the pin on the fat grenade? I'm just asking for a friend here. I just want to know the number. You're not multiplying through mitosis here, so push away from the table and stop doubling your weight. 
I'm not being an uber dick here. We expect you to gain weight when you get pregnant. But when you double your size because you can and you keep the weight on for 10 years, whose fault is that? Oh, that's right, I forgot. He slipped one by the goalie. Now he's in baby jail for 18 to 21 years. So everything you do or don't do, well, that's all his fault and he has to pay for it. It's not like women treat men like walking ATMs or anything. I'm <laughs> just saying. And look at me, sounding all negative. Haha, <laughs> segue. Negativity is a great way to smash into that wall early. And where does all of that negativity come from? Two places. Feminism and entitlement. If you're a feminist, the wall isn't even part of the equation. Most dudes are not writing a check against that. And the ones that are, let's be honest here, you're gonna cheat on them and divorce them anyway and take all their shit. Damn it, he's right. Well said. Now feminism, that definitely breeds entitlement, but it is not a prerequisite, unfortunately. We live in a society that tells women they're worthy because of vagina and reasons. What that means is a woman simply is worthy and that has nothing to do with how many degrees she has. You're worth the best seven to 10 minutes of my time under an assumed name. My name is Zingelbert Pumpy Dick. Anyone with a pulse and a brainstem knows you're not entitled to shit. So when you approach a relationship with that mentality, you've already shot yourself in the foot. And especially if you have da -da, princess complex. We all know these chicks. They were all raised on Disney and either they have a horse or they want one. Anyone with this mindset, they expect you to be a servant, not a partner. And our society is throwing all of its weight behind this mentality. I, I just don't get it. Oh, oh, you've never heard the saying, happy wife, happy life? Yeah, it must be me. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, Space Ghost is on. <laughs> Good one. Now this next one, not everyone can control this because let's face it, life and Murphy happen. You know, born poor, raised poor, or you fuck up and become poor. It causes problems. Well, because if you're poor, you're living off the dollar menu. <laughs> Not like I've done that before or anything. Hey, you gonna finish those fries, bro? Dude, I didn't even know you back then. Get out of here, you time-traveling hobgoblin. But with that being said, it is not as big of a problem now as it used to be. In America, the poor kids are fat. Let that sink in for a moment. They have an Xbox, a $3,000 phone, free medical, the works. They're so oppressed, obviously it's, this is the worst country ever, I mean, come on. You know what'll fix all of that? Socialism, hashtag make poor kids skinny again. Winning, I <laughs> know. Man, that's just mean. That's mean, man. The next one that brings the wall on faster than the speed of light, bad health. And this one, you may have control over it, or <laughs> you may not. If you have a genetic predisposition to getting cancer, well, I'm gonna say it now, I'm sorry. But if you ride the rooster roller coaster and get yourself a case of HPV, which stands for high penis vagina, and you get some type of cervical cancer, not so much sympathy, I'm sorry. Go look in the dictionary between shit and syphilis and you'll find it there. Just like these bitches with the botched plastic surgery. Jesus Christ. Have you seen some of the latest pictures of Nicole Kidman? <laughs> it's like she got one of the best plastic surgeons in the world to, you know, give a little tune up up here. But somehow she agreed to let his inbred cousin work on her face because that worked out so well. It's not like we can remember what you looked like before. You've been naked on screen so many times, I can practically draw your boobs and butt from memory. <laughs> and ironically, that leads us right into the last category. Because there are three main things women usually do trying to avoid the wall. Emphasis on try, because maybe they could push the wall back one or two years, but sooner or later, they're hitting that thing at full speed. So dudes, I'm gonna ask you a question. Hmm. 
What is one of the things you could do when you get botched plastic surgery? Get more plastic surgery. There you go. A <laughs> self-fulfilling prophecy. Hairline, face, boobs, butt, legs, arms, or they can rejuvenate their hoo-hahs. Does any of that fix stupid? No. That's why it's pretty much pointless. <laughs> Now, if you get a scar or have a hair lip, there are surgeons out there that can perform miracles. But there is no surgeon out there good enough to cut back the effects of time. Now, if you agree with me, smile. That's right. You all have way too much Botox. Screen 5. <laughs> and that is why you guys need to hook us up and go to bradonkalis.com slash donate and send us a couple bucks because this shit is expensive. The only way this content gets out there is if you guys share it and support it. Now, I'm just a dude and I'm not worthy, but we appreciate every dollar. Even if you decide to take that money and bury it into bariatric surgery, the effects still are not very pretty. This is one of the key ways these ladies try to avoid the wall and it still doesn't work. Let's just say you were morbidly obese your entire life. And then you have a miracle procedure where you dump an ass load of weight. What do you think is going to happen? You are going to look like a burn victim in reverse. Oh my god, that's a horrible image. You might think that that new found flying squirrel suit is going to help you glide over the wall, but... That is not going to happen. And there is an argument out there that you are worse than you were before. You might think you're going to be able to hide all of that with the new invention called Spanx. That ain't going to happen. You expect to, you know, slap the thigh and ride the wave in, but you really get sucked in and drowned by the undertow. Last but not least, and this trick is pretty pathetic. These ladies who manage to avoid uh, most of the other stuff, they stay in shape, they avoid drugs and alcohol, but somehow they're still childless and unmarried. They could be in the upper 30s and still pass for somewhere in the 20s. But they all have a dead giveaway. Pay attention. I call this one Red Pill Camouflage. They have spent their 20s and 30s getting ran through by the type of men feminism tells them they want. But all of a sudden, out of nowhere, they make this transformation and slap on a red MAGA hat. They finally figured this out. The blue pill men really can't meet their needs or give them shit. So they pretend to be red pill in the hopes they'll attract a couple of conservative providing alphas. But that's not gonna happen, I'm sorry. N no, I'm not. Most of the women out there who claim they are not feminists have feminist beliefs. And if you get these ladies drunk and you get them talking, they will tell on themselves 10 out of 10 times. And even without that, they're not that difficult to spot. And lucky for you, they keep all of their profile pictures public. So check them out. If you see all kinds of tattoos and weird ass piercings and all kinds of different boyfriends, you know what's up. Or they have a bunch of guy friends. At least that's what they tell you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Her, you know, her roommate is a guy, but he's totally gay and nothing ever happened, right? Right? We. Well, at least we know why your butthole has a clit. Ah, oh, God. <laughs> Bottom line, ladies. The wall is there. It is going to happen. You can fight it all you want, but it's waiting for you. Even the dudes who have enough money to build a ramp to jump the wall, they still crash somewhere on the other side. Everyone does. And no amount of blame and shame and whining is gonna change that fact. So do yourself a favor. Quit listening to feminism. It is brainwashing you and taking you down a bad road. And listen to the popster. Even feminists admit their entire narrative is a lie. We made a whole video about it with receipts. Links in the description. So once you're done choking down that red pill of truth, all I can really say is I hope it's not too late for you.
I really don't want to see anyone wind up unhappy. I'm just saying. But remember this, true happiness, it's up to you to provide it for yourself. If someone else provides that to you, they can always take it away. And that is why when you choose to end a relationship on these famous words, I'm not happy. Guess what? <laughs> You're the problem. If a dude made it clear through his words and actions that you, only you, were the provider of his happiness, how f***ed is that? But women do this all day long and a month of Sundays, and everyone thinks it's normal. I'm here to tell you, ladies, that is a recipe for dying alone and being unhappy. If you make yourself happy, no one, I mean no one, can take that away from you. That is true fulfillment. And when you reach that level, you look out at the wall and you're like, eh, bring it on. That doesn't stop the clock. I'm just saying, it does help. I still gotta buy hair dye every two weeks, just like all the dudes in my age bracket. But... I'm not unhappy, despite the well-wishing of my ex-wife. Allegedly, I don't want to get sued. With that being said, <laughs> mm. I am done with the menagerie. <laughs> and I'm done with you and the guy behind you. Space Ghost is on. Perky tits and the booming shell fast. You had no lines and your hairline was was giving you a normal forehead. Now you have a six head, you have beagle ears, and you are gravitationally challenged. It's getting to the point where like I I run into these women and I'm like in the back of my mind I'm like this woman she kinda looks like my mother. God. <laughs> Forget it. I wish I had filmed in actual bars, me giving out like fake, fake <laughs> <laughs>